In this video, I'm going to be giving you a 100% no BS guide on how to create a high converting abandoned card flow in Klaviyo for your e-commerce brand. This flow is the exact same system that I've installed for over 20 brands across which I've helped generate over $40 million in just the last two years. And arguably, it might be one of the most important flows that we do since you can recover up to 15% of the revenue that would otherwise be lost from these abandoned cards. So by the end of this video, you'll be able to install this exact same flow into your own business and add a predictable source of sales and revenue generation that runs on autopilot. So what is an abandoned cart flow? To put it simply, it's a series of automated emails that's going to be sent to customers who added something to their cart, but leave your store without completing their purchase. These customers were so close to placing their order, but you lost them at the last second. And our abandoned cart flow is our chance to convince them that they should come back to buy. There are a ton of mistakes I see all the time that brands make when setting up their abandoned cart flows. So first off, very often the flow triggers and filters in clay are not set up properly and this leads to people who should be receiving your emails being skipped. Next up, there are a lot of brands that send way too few emails in their abandoned card flows and this costs them a ton of revenue. Another super common mistake is brands just send the same generic discounts to everyone and this leads to unnecessary margin being given away. And then we have the worst, most common mistake that I see, which is brands don't do anything to actually convince these customers to buy. They basically just send emails that remind them that they didn't buy and tell them to come back. Right here is an example of what that looks like and it's the most common abandoned cart email that you probably see in your own inbox. The only way that this message is going to actually directly get someone to come back to your store and make a purchase is if the only reason they didn't buy in the first place was simply because they got distracted and forgot to click the buy button. But in reality, there are a ton of different reasons why people don't complete their purchase after adding something to their cart. Nine times out of 10, this is either because they're not sure that the items they were looking at are worth the price. They're not sure that your product will actually actually solve their problem or they're not sure that they can trust your brand. So that's why your job is to proactively put the information in front of them to remove all of these objections. You're going to set up two branches in your abandoned cart flow. One branch is going to be for prospects who have never bought before and the other branch is going to be for your returning customers. Now, the reason why you need to branch your flow like this is because fundamentally someone who has never bought from your brand before has completely different objections to purchasing than someone who has already purchased, trusts your brand and has other reasons for abandoning their cart when they come back to place another order. When it comes to how you handle these objections for prospects, you're going to want to utilize social proof like reviews in all of your emails to build up trust in your brand. You're going to want to reiterate your unique selling points to enhance the perceived value of your products and differentiate yourselves from the competitors that they're also looking at. And for your returning customers, if you think through your customer journey, they placed an order, they came back to your website, which means that they had a good experience with your product. But when they came back, they decided not to buy. These customers are likely thinking that they want to buy again, but they're debating whether it's worth the cost and whether they can find a similar solution that's cheaper from another brand in your market. So the way you can handle these objections is with copy that speaks to reminding them about the benefits that they enjoyed from your brand in the past when they ordered last time and about your unique selling points that they won't get if they switch to another brand. And then because it is about cost for a lot of people, providing offers that help them save on their next order. In terms of the offer that you're communicating, you're not going to give the same discount to everyone like other brands do. So for prospects, you simply want to remind them that they can still take advantage of the acquisition or welcome offer that they received when they signed up for your email or SMS list. And for existing customers, you want to strategically choose an offer that incentivizes them to take action and also adds more value to your business. So for example, brands that offer subscriptions should present their subscribe and save offer. It's ideal for customers who want to receive the product that they like on a regular basis and save. And it's ideal for the business that gets a major LTV boost compared to incentivizing another one-time purchase from that customer. If you don't offer subscriptions, you can communicate your loyalty program. And if you don't have a loyalty program, you can even push customers to your evergreen sales section where they get the savings that they're looking for and you get to clear out the old inventory that you have sitting on your shelves. The final strategy pieces that will bring your abandoned card flow from a nine to a 10 is making sure that your copy promotes urgency, especially in your last email in the flow. So for example, saying something like your cart is about to expire. This urgency absolutely increases your conversion rate for people at the end of a flow that need the push. Last but not least is going to be incorporating SMS into your abandoned cart flow. You absolutely want to take advantage of the near 100% open rates that SMS are going to give you. And the ROI on SMS in abandonment flows is extremely high because it basically costs one penny to send that SMS at that exact touch point. And at that touch point, someone is very close to purchase 
purchasing. So if you send a hundred messages, it's gonna cost you a dollar. And if your conversion rate is 1% and you have an AOV of a hundred dollars, you basically just made a hundred X ROI. If you want some help building the perfect abandoned card strategy that's completely personalized to your brand, click the link in the description and get a full checklist of everything that you need to be including in each email in your flow. Now let's dive into Klaviyo and walk through exactly how to set up your flows to avoid any technical issues that are costing brands in your market thousands in lost revenue each month. First thing I'm going to point out, which is super, super important, is that you are going to have two metrics that signify someone abandoning their cart, essentially. The two metrics you're going to have are your added to cart metric. The other metric you're going to have is the checkout started metric. Let's go over to flows. And here you can click on create flow and we can click build your own over here so that you can see the whole thing from scratch. And let's go ahead and start with the abandoned cart flow, not the abandoned checkout and click create manually. First thing we're going to do here is choose the trigger. We have our checkout started, which we just saw. And then we also have the added to cart. The add to cart is going to be used for our abandoned cart flow. And then what's really, really, really important here is in the profile filters section here, we want to add in any metrics that are downstream in the funnel. So after someone adds something to cart, the metrics that are downstream are they can start a checkout and they can also place an order. So what we're going to do here is we're going to add in filters to basically say if someone has done either of those two things, we don't want them to receive any emails from our abandoned cart flow because instead what we want is them to receive our abandoned checkout flow emails or our post purchase emails if they have placed an order. So what we're going to do here is click what someone has done and we're going to say checkout started zero times since starting this flow. Then we're going to click end and we're also going to say placed order zero times since starting this flow and we can click save over here and then we can click save over here. So now our trigger for the flow is set up. Our flow filters are set up. So unfortunately, there's not one right answer for what your time delay should be. I believe the Klaviyo default is four hours. Typically, when we A-B test this at dispatch, we see shorter time delays winning. So I would start with a one hour time delay over here. And I'm going to show you how to set up an A-B test for this. Essentially, what we're saying here is if someone has added something to their cart and then they have not started a checkout, they have not placed an order, we're going to check that information in one hour. And if those things are true, then they'll start receiving our emails. We're going to set up a conditional split, which will allow us to achieve our strategy of branching between prospects and existing customers. So what we can do here is simply say, what has someone done before? And then we're going to say placed order at least once over all time. So if they place an order at least once over all time, that makes them a existing returning customer. And if not, then that makes them a prospect. Now what we can do is start putting our emails in over here. So we have our first email and this is going to be email email one for existing customers. This is very important. You want to make sure that you turn off skip recently emailed profiles. What this does is if this is checked, it will basically skip anyone who's received an email within the last 16 hours. You can check enable UTM tracking and then we can click save over here. Now we're going to want to have three emails for our existing customers and three emails for our prospects. So I'm just going to go ahead and clone these over here. And now the next thing we need to do is set up the next time delays. So you want to have a one day time delay in between each of these emails because someone has clearly shown that they're in market for your product at this point. So we're going to set this to one day. We can clone this and set this to one day. And then we're going to do the exact same thing on the other branch. Now that everything is cloned across, you can simply just change existing customers to prospects over here. So now we have the basic infrastructure for our banding card flow set up. But the question you're probably asking is how do I make sure that we're showing the product that someone abandoned to them. Let's dive in and set that up. I'm going to head over to one of our clients abandoning cart flows so we can see exactly what this looks like over here in a real email. So this is email number one for prospects. And essentially here you can see that what we want to display is strong branding. So we have their logo and a great image of a recipe used using their products. And then we want to let them know you left this behind. So we want to have copy that speaks to why they should come back and buy. We have the reminder of their welcome offer here and a clear call to action to go complete your order. And then we have the incentives for them to come back. So this is the objection handling. So essentially, why might someone want to come and buy from Red Six Spice in order to try these delicious recipes that you need Red Six Spice products to buy, which is what you'll find out when you click find recipe inspiration. And then what sets us apart? These are all the things you're going to get if you buy from Red Six Spice compared to another online grocer. Let's zero in on this split over here, which is where we are going to be able to communicate exactly what they left behind. Each time someone clicks
clicks on added to cart, that's a different metric that's being triggered. And if they click add to cart on five different products, you're only going to be able to show one of the products they added to cart. So that's why we're going to use a split here. We have our image over here, and then we have our text over here. The way we're showing the image and the product name dynamically is by using the dynamic code that's associated with the trigger. So how do you find the code that you should be using? So essentially, if you click review and test, once you set up your flow infrastructure and create an email, what you're going to see here is the person's information who triggered the metric. So here we can see that this person has added something to cart. And then we're going to see all the properties that are associated with them adding something to cart. So we can see what categories the product was in. And then we have the image URL. So we're going to take the image URL. And if you just click on image URL, you're going to see that this green banner pops up that says copied it to clipboard. To show you how to do this from scratch, I'm just going to drag a split block in here. See what this looks like. So we want our left column to be an image. And then you're going to click select image. You're going to click on dynamic image. And then you're going to paste in the property from the preview. And then on the right side, we have our text. So if we want to show the name now of the product, what we can do is we can hover over name and we can click it. And then we see the name has been copied. So now we can go over to the text column and we can simply paste it in without formatting. But obviously you may want to center align this. And what we can see here is if we click preview, now you'll be able to see exactly what we had previously, which is the image and then the name of the product. If you want to go one step further and you want to actually be able to link back to the product page, if someone clicks on the image or if they click on the name of the product, then what you're going to want to do is you can click preview again. And then we can go to the URL of the product page where they clicked add to cart. And then we can paste that in to where it says link address for the image. And then in the text section, we can hover over this. We can add a link, paste that in, and we're now good to go. So now you click it and we go back to the product page that someone was on when they clicked add to cart. Here, we can't link back to checkout. You have a decision to make. You can either link back to the cart page on your website. So essentially, if someone was browsing on their computer when they add something to cart and we just have redstickspice.com slash cart, then this is going to link them back to the cart that had their products in it. The other thing you can do, and this is worth A-B testing, you can actually link this back to the product page as well for a seamless experience. The reason why you might want to do that is just because if someone is browsing on their computer when they are shopping and then they get this email on their phone and go back to their cart, the cart page is actually going to look empty. So you can see here, it's just going to take them to this page, which isn't ideal compared to taking them back to the product page that they were on so that they could just continue shopping. So if you want to play it safe, you can definitely link back to the product page or definitely A-B test this. While we're here to give you an idea of what the existing customer branch emails look like for Redstick Spice, they have a loyalty program. So you can see here, we have our reminder of what is in cart. But here for Red Six Spice's returning customers, you can see we're pushing their loyalty program to let customers know who have came back, started a cart, but not completed their checkout, that if they place another order, they can earn loyalty points, which can then be used to redeem with coupons for dollars off. We just want to remind these existing customers about what they love about shopping at Red Stick Spice. If you want to test your time delay, what you're going to want to do is bring your time delay into each branch. So you can have your one hour time delay on the yes branch, one hour time delay on the no branch. And then what we're going to do here is we're going to bring in a conditional split right before the time delay. And we are going to say that this is going to be a random sample of 50% of people. So 50% of people will go down the yes branch, 50% of people will go down the no branch. We are going to have our two time delays over here. Let's say we want to test a one hour time delay against a two hour time delay. We're going to utilize this. Then what we're going to do is clone email number one. So 50% of people are going to get email one after one hour, 50% are going to get after two hours. And then we just want to rejoin the rest of the flow over here. This is exactly how it's going to work. And then when we look at the analytics, we'll be able to see which one is converting better and then use that time delay or set up another AB test to test a different time delay. And you'll want to do that on both sides of the flow. Once you're completely set with your abandoned cart flow, what you can do is click on clone on that flow and then change cart to checkout. We're going to change the trigger from added to cart to checkout started. It's just been cloned. We can edit the flow now. We can remove the checkout started zero times since starting this flow. That's not necessary. And we can say placed order zero times since starting this flow. So we're all set on the trigger and the filters at this point. Then what we're going to do is when we go into any of these emails, I'll show you exactly how to set up the dynamic block for your abandoned checkouts so that they are seeing all the products that were in their checkout. So we're in Red Six Spice's abandoned checkout flow now. You can see the content is the same, but the block is different. So instead of using a split block like we used before, we're going to use a table block. So let's go ahead and rebuild this right over here. I'm going to bring in a 
table element. And then we can set the first column to an image. We can set the second column to text. And let's go ahead and recreate what's right here. So the way we're gonna do this is you're going to click on styles and then you're gonna change the static data to dynamic data. And this is gonna allow for us to populate the table with all of the items that were in someone's checkout. Now in the row collection field, you're going to copy this character for character, letter for letter, event dot extra dot line underscore items. And then for row alias, you're just going to write the word item. Now that we have our dynamic data section and our fields set up over here, we're going to go back to the table contents. We're going to click on select image. You're going to want to type this in letter for letter over here. And it's going to say item dot product dot images dot zero dot src. And you're going to want to have the curly brackets on each side. And then when you click save, it will now be stored there. For the product name, what you can do is just add in curly brackets, item dot product dot title. You can format it as you want. And then if you want to add in the price, let's say, or any other details about the products that they were adding, you can look up price. We can find the one that just says price. We can put that in underneath. And then if we click preview over here, we can see that it's pulling in as expected. So obviously this should be formatted better. Let's just take an example of someone who started to check out with several different products. You can see here it's pulling in all of the product prices, item names, and images for each of those products. And then if you did want to format it so that it looks a little cleaner, what you can do is just go to styles in the table. You can simply add in padding to the styles as you'd like, or even block padding and just play around with that until you get to the point where it looks like you want it to look. The last thing we're going to change here is where it says complete your order and save 10%. We're going to change the link because this can link back to the checkout that they started and it absolutely should link back there. So you just want to change the code over here for the link address to be curly brackets event dot extra dot checkout underscore URL and then the curly brackets again. And this will link back to each person's checkout dynamically. And voila, we've now turned our perfect abandoned card flow into a perfect abandoned checkout flow. In this very moment, you might just be focused on trying to build out your abandoned card flow, but especially if you're just starting out or if you're intermediate when it comes to email marketing, there's obviously way more that goes into successfully running email marketing for your e-com brand than just setting up this one or two flows. So click here to check out the next video because if I could go back in time to when I was just starting out, I would have done things very, very differently. In this video, I'll show you every single thing that I would have done when I was starting out so that you can make email marketing your most profitable channel. I'll see you in the next one.